If you want to study life on Mars, where on Earth do you go? Well, the best comparison to the red planet could be here in the deepest mine in Britain. So this lift's dropping at seven metres a second and it takes seven minutes to get all the way down the 1,150 metre shaft to the mine. Uh, and as we go down, and it really is quite fast, you can feel it getting warmer. Roaring noise is the mine's ventilation system. This deep, the Earth's geothermal heat means temperatures can reach 40 degrees at the mine face. That's 10 kilometres out under the North Sea, but we're not going that far. We're driving through a dried up seabed that's left a layer of salt 250 million years old. Bulby Mine produces a million tonnes of potash for fertiliser every year, but it also hosts one of the world's only permanent underground labs. It's a really hot, dry environment and really extreme conditions for the miners to work in, but it's exactly those extremes that have attracted the scientists so deep below ground. As if there's life locked into this salt here at Bowlby, and this salt's been, you know, relatively untouched for 250 million years, if there was ever life on other planets, that might also be locked underground. So here's the lab. Uh -huh. It suits the researchers perfectly, apart from the dust. So we slip into something a bit more scientific. Wow, it's quite a lab. <laughs> so yeah, so this is it. This is the main, main experimental hall. Over the last two weeks, 30 engineers and astrobiologists from around the world have been working together here to experiment, share techniques and ideas. So I've come to Bulby because it's 1.1 kilometres underground. We've got a lot of rock shielding us from cos cosmic rays and other kinds of radiation we get on the surface. And behind us you can see um, a lead box in which we've reduced the radiation environment to one hundredth of that which is on the surface. And I'm growing microbes in there to see whether there's an effect of the lack of radiation. If life lurks deep in Martian rocks, it's likely microbes, which may be like the ancient ones down here. If we're going to the universe and our solar system, let's start from here on Earth. Yeah. So we're looking at a very uh, extreme life that could live in salt. Right. And this is the best place. This team from Switzerland is working to refine the close-up camera destined for the European Space Agency's Mars rover. Outside, they're testing instruments that will fly to Mars as early as 2020 on ESA's ExoMars lander. And this is the University of Leicester's robotic space chisel. It's caught the attention of a passing astronaut. We will send it on the rover to Mars, and uh, if it works fine, we will adapt it for astronautic use. Why can't you just go with a rock with a hammer on Mars? Well, if I use a hammer, the hammer might just fling back and then just uh, damage my visor, and that would be a bad day on Mars if I have a hole in my <laughs> visor. We still don't know whether there's life on other planets, but yeah. over the last few decades, things have got tremendously more exciting. The discovery of, of watery habitats and the history of, of Mars, uh, the discovery of, uh, of oceans uh, under the surfaces of icy moons in our own solar system, and the amazing discoveries of planets orbiting other stars, exoplanets, that might also have habitable conditions. We still have to make that final step of answering the question, is there life elsewhere? It's a big step, but work like this and distant worlds being discovered mean the science and the odds are getting better all the time.